Hello guys, a lot of things are about to change on this channel, so let's get into it. Hello everyone, it's your boy, Nitro7000, and this video is going to be a little different than the other videos I had on my channel before. But before I get into it, welcome to everybody who's been on my channel before, welcome to everyone who's new, and so yeah, let's get into it. Um, so for those of you who've seen the content I have on my channel so far, which you might know what, what um, one thing you, you might know is that I'm an artist. What this channel has been for me so far is a portfolio of me show, showcasing my different creative endeavors and my different projects that I come up with. And don't worry, this channel will continue to have that sort of content, but I've realized, unfortunately, um, that content, that type of content and how often I've been uploading is not enough for the channel to grow the way I want it to grow. So I'm going to be doing a little experiment. For the next 30 weeks, I'm going to be uploading a video one video every week and at the end of the 30 weeks I'm going to basically showcase um, showcase my growth I'm gonna show how many subscribers I have I'm gonna show how many um, views I've been getting stuff like that and um, I got this idea from some bigger youtubers um, given the fact that I'm a small youtuber I was like um, they have they obviously have more experience than me and if they're recommending it hey why not give it a try I mean it couldn't hurt, right? Therein lies the question. What kind of content will I be posting for these 30 weeks? Now, ideally, I would I would like to post more projects and stuff like that. But here's the thing with those types of videos, it takes time for me to perfect it and for me to make it of a high enough quality that I'm proud enough to show you guys. So um, I did some thinking. You know, I've showed so many different types of art on my channel. I've shown, um, I've shown me me making music. Um, I've I've sung. I've rapped. Um, I've showed some short films. I've showed little scenes from a play that I've been working on. A whole bunch of stuff like that. And you know, there's, there's some other stuff there as well. But um, like I said, it's gonna take. It takes for that type of content. It takes time to make. So then I decided this. My main passion out of all the art forms is theater. So these new videos are going to be related to theater. How specifically? I'll tell you. I'm going to start doing reviews of um, theater, basically. Um, and here's the thing. Unfortunately, I'm poor. So I don't really have the money to go out and see all these different performances. And not only that, there's a lot of, um, given the circumstances that I have in my life right now, I'm kind of restricted from going out there to see it even if I had the money. So, um, this is what I'm going to do. I have a subscription to Broadway HD, which is basically like a Netflix for theater. It has musicals, it has plays, it has ballet performances, it has a whole bunch of stuff. Only thing is, it's not. It doesn't have as wide of a variety as Netflix because most people don't record theater, well, at least legally. But um, what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to in the in the video in the, in these upcoming videos, it's going to start off me giving a brief synopsis of the of whatever I just watched. Um, I'll give my opinion on it, and then I'll give it a rating. Uh, the rating is going to be from one being Basuda to 10 being worth a Tony, well, at least in my opinion. Also, at the end of each of those videos, I'm going to include two different shows that I'm considering watching the following week. And um, basically, I'm gonna I would like for you guys to vote in the comments which of the two video, which of the two shows that you want me to see that you would want me to see. The video, the show that gets the most comments will be the show that I watch for the following week. And if I don't really get any comments, I'll just choose, 
out of the two and I'll make a video on it. So, oh yeah, and also, if you, if you have an idea for something you want me to see, <clears throat> You have an idea for something that you want me to see, but um, but it's not one of the choices. You can always also drop that in the comments, and I will. And if it gets enough, um, if it gets enough love and likes, I'm going to take to take a look into it and see if I can find a way to watch it. With that being said, that's enough of me talking about this. Let's get into the review. Okay, so for this first view, I'm going to be, well, for this first review, I'm going to be reviewing a musical that I found on Broadway HD called She Loves Me. Now, She Loves Me has a book written by Joe Masteroff, and it has music composed by Jerry Bach. The cool thing about that is, I found out after watching the show that Jerry Bach is actually the same person who created the music from Fiddler on the Roof. Now, Fiddle on the Roof actually has a special place in my heart because I actually played in Fiddle on the Roof in high school. Um, I played as Tevia, the main character, so that was pretty cool. If you're interested in seeing a few clips of my filler performance, stay tuned until the end. But um, back to She Loves Me. Now, the performance I saw starred uh, Laura Benanti and Zachary Levi, a.k.a. Shazam which was surprising. Um, and they played the lead characters, Amalia Balish and George Nowak. Warning, mild spoilers ahead. So the plot of She Loves Me goes as such. Our main character of the play is actually, even though like there's a lead male and lead female, the main character is basically George Nowak. And George Lo uh, Nowak is a salesman and a clerk at a perfumery, which is basically a place that sells uh, perfume and female hygiene and body products. So that's basically what he sells. And one thing that's interesting to know about this play is that back in the day, in, like back in the day in real life, uh, one way people used to find romantic partners is through writing an ad in a newspaper and saying that they're looking for someone, saying what, and describing themselves, saying what kind of things they're looking for. If someone was interested in them, it'll be an, an anonymous ad as well, so there will be no picture of that person's face. Now, if, someone's per if someone was interested in that person's ad, they could write back to them, and if the person who posted the ad was interested, it could be the start of a beautiful relationship. Now, George, the romantic that he is, he does this, and he, uh, we find out early in the play that he's writing to an, a woman that he does not know who she is. Well, he does not know how she looks like, and he can. And the only thing that he knows about the only things he knows about her is from what she writes him. And um, then later on, he meets Amalia Balish, and they get off to a bad start. Moreover, they actually end up hating each other, and that relationship continues that way until. George finds out that Amalia is the girl that he was writing to all along. So, um, past that point, the rest of the play is a, basically their journey going from hating each other to falling madly in love. But, the question is, how, how does it happen? And does it feel authentic? Now, as for how did it happen, I'm not going to tell you guys that because I want you guys to see it yourself. Um, but I will say, I will answer this. Does it feel authentic? And in my opinion, it absolutely does. You know, I didn't go into this musical with high expectations. It was a, it's a romantic um, musical. And I've seen a lot of romantic I've seen a handful of romantic movies and TV shows, and a lot of them I find pretty corny or unrealistic, so I'm not really a big fan. But in this musical, I actually, you know, it actually had me rooting for the characters because the two, the, the lead boy and the lead girl, they're very likable people. 
even though they do unlikable things sometimes. And I find that interesting. I find that good writing and good storytelling when a author is able to do that. And uh, what I'll say is this. One, you know, an interesting thing I liked about this is that the main characters and the secondary characters, um, they all had their moments in the musical. They, and they, they all had their own songs. And, you know, this is excluding the side characters, but I thought it was interesting that they all had their moments without the play feeling bloated or convoluted. So um, I like that. And um, I will say my favorite song in the musical. And I actually I have I have a bad memory, so I don't really remember all the tunes. Not to say that this musical wasn't catchy. There was definitely many numbers that I enjoyed. However, the song that really sticks to me is Vanilla Ice Cream, and it's sung by Amalia Balish. I can't really get too much into details about what the song is about or the context of the scene that it's in without getting into deeper spoilers. But what I will say is that um, I, love this, I love that song and the scene that it was in because it marked, uh, well, it showed Amalia and George in a way that we'd never seen them before in the musical. And I just thought, I just thought peeling back the layers to those characters was really interesting. Now, on to the issues that I had with the musical. Hmm. You know, I didn't really have that many issues with uh, this musical. The only thing that I did have a problem with was, I would say, the bad guy. Now, not him in general. He did his part, and I think he played it well. The actors, well, they did a really good job. But I just didn't like how it ended. Now, you know, this musical does have like a happily ever after ending, but, and the villain does get defeated, but only somewhat. And that's my problem. I feel like, you know, because at the end, he kind of indicates that even though he's defeated, he's going to get revenge on them. And basically, he's going to come back. He's, he's going to bounce back. And... You know, I just felt like that that scene, at least the way they did it, it kind of undermined his defeat a little bit. And it kind of like, it kind of, you know, it didn't really set well with me. That's like the only problem I have with the musical, though. Now, on to the rating. What would I rate this musical? I mean, based on what I've been saying so far, I think it's already obvious to assume that I'm going to give this musical a good rating. But, you know, it, it was nothing groundbreaking, but I feel like it had good music, a, a good plot, likable characters, um, and something that I definitely would want to see again, and I would recommend to other people. But So, like I said, there was, and it was only like one problem I had with it. It was only small. So, you know, I think we're going to start this, channel, this uh, series of reviews off with a bang. So my review is going to be, drum roll please, 9 out of 10. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before you guys leave, there's two more things I have to tell you. Um, as I said earlier, I'm actually going to tell you guys how you can find footage of me um, performing in Fiddle on the Roof. Now if you go on my channel and you go to playlists, you go to my playlist, you will see a one of the, one of the playlists is going to be is going to say performances. If you click on that and you scroll down, you should see a you should see um, a handful of videos that have some clips of me um, performing in Fiddler. So enjoy that. The second thing that I want to tell you guys is the shows that I'm thinking about watching next is these two. So it's either going to be Passover or Carman. Matthew Bourne's car band. Oh, Matthew Bourne's car man. Yeah. So pass over a car man. So um, definitely uh, tell me what you want me to watch next in the comments. With that being said, thank you for reaching this point in the, vi in the video. I was just about to say vehicle. I said that in one of my earlier takes, but I caught myself. Uh, <laughs> as I was saying, though, thank you for reaching this point in the video. And... Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, 
and turn on the bell, the bell icon so that you can be notified the next time I make a post. Um, hmm. And I think that's all. So, um, subscribe. Subscribe!